guys, it's me, Ursula Thomas, and of course, you know by now, I am with Jim Thomas. And we are just popping on. First of all, let's say we hope you had a Merry Christmas. Great Christmas. <laughs> hope you guys had a wonderful, marvelous, outstanding Christmas. Yeah. And of course, you know by now that this channel deals with relationship, marriage, uh, two becoming one, how to be ah. successful in a relationship, and we really started this channel if you go back and i'm trying to put it in the card because we thought we had something to offer no we know we have something to offer because being married at a young age and being able to sustain uh a happy marriage after 33 years uh we just wanted to give some little clues of what helped us and what yeah. continuously helped us and so one of the things we thought would be good, um, this particular conversation is during this time with the uh, corona and just life itself and just, you know, the situation, the financial situations that are going on, all these things. So one of the things we thought would be good to always go back and revisit, always talk about, always to keep at the forefront is peace. So if that's something you want to hear and something you want to uh, just be encouraged by us, then please stay tuned. And with that said, let's get into it. Peace. Peace. You know, um, last week, I, uh, I think I was maybe leaving the school and you know, um, talking to vendors, talking to some of the uh, teachers who, who's having to come actually come back into the uh, the building, the school building, um, and I I sensed and so much fear. It had I mean it had gripped them and, and even to the point where, uh, not even wanting to come out in public, uh, and I sensed that there was a great sense of of, 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 of fear. And as I got in my car, and I, the Holy Spirit just started speaking to me. He said, you know. My peace, my peace controls the ones who wants it to control. And I couldn't understand it at first. And I came on, I talked to my wife. I said, you know, we really need to be talking about peace. And the Holy Spirit said, no, continual peace. And I think that's one thing that we really need at a time like this is continual peace. And how does continual peace look to you? And one, one thing that continual peace how continued peace looked to me is that I can't allow myself to watch so much TV. I can't allow my, my spirit man to watch so many so much TV and there's so many reports that's out there from state to state to state and who has this and what's happening and and uh and it, it will actually put you in a sense of fear. And if you stay, if you stay in that TV so long, it blots out what God says. How many times have you been in a place where you wanted peace in your life? And the thing that didn't bring you peace, you continuously talked about it. You dwelled on that thing. You reminded yourself. You reminded others of where you was at, what, you, what, what had happened to you. And it builds no peace. And we're, we're in a place now where it's time for peace to be exemplified in every facet of life, in politics, in the social arena, at home, at work, in the school system. Just peace. And how does that look to you? How does, how does continual peace look to you? You know, it's so interesting because I was sitting here as he was talking and I was thinking, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, I want peace. You know, I desire peace. And they don't know how to uh, attach, I'll use that word, peace to them. The thing about it is the Bible tells us that pursue peace. We are to pursue peace. Uh, pursue peace with all men. The thing, the thing about that is, in order to pr 
pursue peace. That means go after. When you pursue something, you go after it. You don't allow it to escape you. You go after it. And you say, well, how do I go after it? Mm -hmm. Well, God tells us. He said his peace, nobody else's peace. Not your peace, not my peace, but his peace. He said it surpasses all man understanding. So the only way we really can pursue peace and go after peace and uh, adjust peace within us is taking biblical practical steps to find out what this look like. I think my husband explained it very well, and that's hard for us as human beings, let's be honest. But he explained it very well when he said that, you know, and the Bible tells us, he says, think on those things. So I tell my husband all the time, one of my favorite trips uh, is before anything that uh, I could allow to come in to take that away or anything like that. Or, or, or if I find myself going to a certain place, mm -hmm. I think on this trip, me and my husband took a trip in uh, 2017, I believe it was. And it was such a fun trip for yeah. us. It was a cousin retreat. We, we, we yeah. took off work. I left early. He left early. And we drove the countryside. The, the countryside, guys. We had never, Ooh. we thought we had drove, driven countryside before, but just, and I, I'm a person that I love, it's something about the nature of God that just automatically brings me peace. Being by water, I'm, I'm giving you tips. Being, I'm talking about for me, being by water, uh, going looking at the lake, going looking at water, walking downtown where we have the, you know, the water. Uh, early morning drives, drinking yes. my coffee early in the morning, uh, things like that. And so when we was riding and there was so much countryside and we was seeing the cows and we was going up the hills and we was going on Highway U and Highway P. Uh, and and uh, we, when we got to a town, we stopped and got us a cup of coffee and the coffee was so good. And we were riding and we was listening to the music that we could get. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we had so, we filmed time. and we had such a great, great time. time. So that's something sketched inside of me. Now after that, we had some situations that occurred that really brought a trying time to both of us. So whenever I start feeling a little kind of way, I can come and sit and just look out and just drink my cup of coffee and I reflect back on that time and the fun way and that automatically brings me peace. So, what you have to do is, and that, believe it or not, is the peace of God because what did he say? The things that bring you joy. The things that are good. The things that, that are pure, virtue. Innocent. The thing, he said, think on those things. Now, the reason he told us to think on those things is because those are the things that can change and adjust our attitude and can allow peace to come in. Because even for that moment, not saying you won't go back there, but even for that moment, that hour, that two hours, you will have a sense of peace. And if you practice that continuously, you will find yourself more and more having that sense of peace. And sometimes, you know, we try to rush things and try to rush God because we feel like we know what should be happening and how it should be happening. And, you know, I don't care if if you find yourself doing good for six months. Then that seven month, you feel in some kind of way. Take your time, go back, allow that peace to come and embrace you and comfort you. God, peace is always with us. Yes. It's only how we allow it to comfort us. Because a lot of times the situation we feel like be so damaging and so destructive that when God, peace try to come in, the destruction and the damaging staying God and God away, God, peace. And you say, what does that mean? What does that look like? When you are always have the peace of God, it's always present before you. He said you pursue it, right? So when you find yourself getting ready to want to pursue God's peace, that damage and, and destructive mindset and behavior automatically come up. And when it come up, it puts God's peace at a standstill. So you can't find yourself 
being able to go around it and pursue it because you have given it the authority and the power to stand against God's peace. So you say, I want God's peace, but you can't receive God's peace because what you have allowed to resist God's peace is still there. And it's not going to go away until you make a conscious decision that, hey, I want you to go away. And we, for whatever reason, we hold on to things uh, for, for, for different reasons. And that's why we have to sometimes really sit and analyze, why am I really holding on to this? What does this do for me? One of the things uh, uh, I remember I used to watch uh, Steve Harvey, and he would say, uh, what did he sell? How's that working out for you? Mm-hmm. And if you find yourself that it's not working out for mm-hmm. you, then you got to find out what works. And we're not saying it's going to happen like that. We're not saying it's going to happen overnight. We're not saying that. It's a conscious decision of, to work toward it. It's an effort that you have to put forth to work toward it. And I promise you, on a continuous it gets better and better and better and better and I truly believe if you keep trusting God and keep allowing the word that you hear that's from God to really reside inside of you I truly believe before you know it it'll go away some days are better than others some months are better than others some years are better than others you know because the enemy has to always come and try to re-represent it in a different way so he can come and snatch that piece and you'll find yourself allowing him to present it to you. Now I always say he plays, he really plays the same movie, but it's in different theaters, so to speak. And, and especially in different times. And the thing about pursuing peace is that you always first have to go to you. Mm. We often talk about rejection, hurt, bitterness, anger, resentment, but you and that's one thing that I had to learn through it all of uh, things that I know people have actually done to me wrong. When I began to ask the right questions to me, what is holding me back from being a peaceful person? Let me go inside my emotions. Let me go inside how I operate. Let me go inside how I talk. Let me go inside how I look. Because I, I, I know for a fact is that there's been times that I didn't operate in peace. And it would be very easy for me to jump up and get into somebody's face. And I know how I look. I know how I look and I know how I talk and I know how I sound when I get angry. Because my voice tone comes up. The wrinkles come into my face. My, my, the contortions of my body totally change. And I don't have to curse at anyone, but they are no. Mm. This brother, hey, I better step back. I better either step back or I better step back up. I better step up to the plate. Something to go on. Something finna go down. As I began to grow in Christ Jesus, I began to look at myself. And I asked myself, could I have done something differently? And my background and my family, we are loud black people. We are. We're loud. We hey, when we excited, we're loud. When we angry, we're loud. When we try to be quiet, we're loud. And that's the thing I had to work on me to learn how to pursue peace was that hey, I had to look at myself. Who am I dealing with? And how do they see me? Or how do I think they see me? And the more and more I began to look at me and ask myself certain questions, somewhere down in my emotions, things started changing. I didn't desire to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that aggressiveness to be seen outwardly. Because when that aggression was seen outwardly, guess who else felt that? My wife, my children, and people who was around me said that they loved me. Or what the game over you, boy? And I had to actually learn how peace looks. I pursue peace with my wife daily. But before I can pursue peace with her daily, I had to pursue peace with me daily. And vice versa. And the way I do that, I work on me. Every morning I get up, I make a conscious decision. You know, hey, I just want to have a good day. And I 
have certain routines. One of my routines is that the things that bring peace to me is that, and I'm being honest with you guys, is taking a shower. Because I grew up in the country where we didn't have running water. We had to warm our water. And it was a lot of boys, and it was a lot of us in the household. And now that I'm older and God has blessed to have home, a nice home and drive cars and, you know, I'm just being real with you. When I get up in the morning, and I begin to take a shower, a hot shower. Hey, that brings so much peace to me. Because I knew where I came from. Mm. Just the, just water itself. Soap, good soap. Some expensive soap <laughs> that can make my body smell real good. And soft and moisturized. You know, I thank God for that because why? I mean, it's just the little simple things. Being able to put on some clothes. Being able to come into the kitchen and find some food. Being in a area where I ain't got to rip and run and worry about have somebody stole my car. I'm just being real with you. It's just the little things that bring peace to me. So now when I interact with some of my other sisters and brothers who's having a really tough time, give me that peace that's on the inside of me. I'm talking about that continual peace. And sometimes it just comes to the point where, hey, just be in the ear. Mm -hmm. Or to the point, guess what? I'm going to encourage you by nature. Didn't know that. And um, even to the point where my wife used to point that thing out to me. And sometimes being an encourager by, by nature It'll kind of have you on the lie sometimes. It really will. And I've had to learn about that. How do I balance off telling the truth while I'm trying to encourage people? And I, and I thought about that thing. And God said, when you begin to tell people who they are, as it applies to what I said about them, it's no lie. I said, sister, you're going to be all right. Brother, you're going to be all right. You're, going, you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. Who said you was overweight? Who said you can't make it? Who said you was broke? I'm looking at, I'm looking at a multimillionaire. I might not be able to give that to you, but I, you know what? I can sure give you something to take care of you for now. How can I serve you? Because I love you. That breaks the wall down. And all those walls that was built up from the enemy. And as you begin to break those walls down through just simple understanding, I do understand. I do know what it means to be not have money. I do know how it feels to not, to not, to, to know, to not know how you're going to get your bills paid. I know how they feel. I know how they feel. But I want to encourage you. It's not going to last. And just, and I, and I do do this, and I just tell people, I say, hey, and just by you communicating with me and sharing your, your emotions with me, God has already met your needs. God said he would never leave you, nor would ever forsake you. But I done did all this, and I did it. I said, so? I said, it ends right now. So in the process of trying to pursue continual peace, there are some things that you got to say to yourself. What is it about me that I can't let certain things go? What is it about me that makes me so angry? What is it that about me that makes me say ugly things about other people that I know that was true that may not be true now? You know what? That's so good. And I want to interject right quick and just say this also is that, you know, you are always continuously learning yourself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we think, you know, once we reach a certain age, you know, we know us. Oh, I know me. I know me. I know myself. But learning yourself really should be a continuous basis because mm -hmm. you shouldn't be the same. I, sh I shouldn't be the same today that I was yesterday. I should learn something new about me today that I didn't even realize because so much stuff about us personally goes over our head. And then even when other people try to bring it out, we'd be like, no, that ain't me. But on the outside looking in, that 
that person can see stuff that you are overlooking. And some of the stuff you know is you, but some of the stuff you are overlooking, but if you allow yourself to be honest with yourself, then you'll say, you know what? And I tell my husband all the time, I learned something new about me. I learned some, so I thank God because I don't. I love learning about me because the more I learn about me, the more I accept about me. It's mean the more I'm willing to grow in Christ because God can tell those things to me and I receive them. Mm-hmm. Because I'm gonna tell you why, and the reason I say that. Not saying that I won't receive from somebody else. I'm just saying that we have a tendency as human be- as human beings, we believe ourselves more than we believe anybody else. And you said, mm, no, that's not true. Yes, it is. And I'm going to tell you why. You can get up and look at yourself in the mirror. And you can tell yourself, I do not look good in this dress or this suit. And once you made that mind up that you don't look good, I don't care how many places you go and people say, oh, you look so good. You look so good. You'll make them an excuse of why you don't feel like they tell the truth. Even if you don't say it verbally, you'll say, it, mm, she just saying something. She trying to be funny. I know what I look like in this suit. I don't care what you say. I'm away in it. You know, you start talking to yourself to filter in uh, the excuses of why you can't believe what somebody else is saying. And they actually could be telling the truth, saying you look good. But because of how you feel about yourself, because we have a tendency, especially as women, and I do believe men do it too, we have a tendency when we look in the mirror, we go straight to the area that we don't desire the most about ourselves. We hone in on that area. So when we hone in on that area, when we try something on, we automatically hone. We like, oh. But then when we present it to somebody else, they don't hone in on that area. So they be like, oh, girl, you look good. But as soon as they say that, your mind go to that area that you don't feel like it's so desirable on yourself. Yep. You be like, oh, yep. no. You know, and that's a work in progress. Even, and I don't mind sharing, you know, I don't think my husband mind sharing. <laughs> but even, I found myself, even if I put on a certain kind of negligee, and my husband might be like, my husband may be like, oh, you look good, you look good, you look good, you look good. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, but if I do this, it'll look much better. Mm. If I do that, it'll look much better. Because I've already preconceived the thoughts and notions that how I already yeah. perceived it instead of what he's saying. So even pursuing peace in that part about loving ourselves and loving where we are right now, it's nothing wrong wanting to be a better version of yourself. A greater version of yourself, especially in Jesus Christ. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. But don't allow yourself to overtalk, overthrow what God is trying to teach you about yourself. And on that same note, there have been many times I've said that to her, and in my inside, the the receiving went out the wrong way because it was like, you know how you be acting, baby. You know, you you looking good. Looking good, smelling good, talking good, but it didn't get reciprocated back to me. And earlier in my marriage, see, I've been all angry, I've been upset, but now, guess what? I'm just, now, guess what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mature offspring in that area of guess what? Encouraging my wife, even if I don't get the response that I, I think I should get right then and there. Sometimes when you get the response after the fact, be even great. But I want to share this too a lot of times is that, especially during those times, it's because of what's going on personally within uh, I said myself. Because if I'm not believing what you're saying or not trusting what you're saying, I'm like, oh, he just lying. You know, he just trying to say that. He just uh, want to have sex. He just did. Oh, he just did. Come he just, I mean, seriously, you know, that's, you already... We're serious. So, a serious talk. So when, you know, something they say, oh, you look good, but like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, thank you. Okay, yeah, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that, you don't think about the damage that that can cause. Also, in uh, the other person want to be uh, intimate in that way, because intimacy is not always, you know, in the bedroom. Intimacy yeah. style washing dishes. Intimacy style mopping the floor, honey. Intimacy is not always in the bedroom, you know, because a lot of times, especially if you, you know, work, you have things on your plate, you know, got stuff going on. It's nothing like coming home, baby, and the meal already done, the house already cleaned, the bed already changed, made up and looking good. That's intimacy. I'm going to be into you, honey. That's intimacy. 
<laughs> and so, uh, okay. hey, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so when you know, when you are not feeling the best, or you feel like the only reason you're saying that is because you want something back, mm -hmm. you have a tendency not to mm -hmm. uh, verbalize mm -hmm. back. You know. But we don't want to prolong this. So I think we're already almost at 30 minutes. You have anything you want to conclude? That's with? it. I mean, you know, just and hey, that's okay, how, I that's... tell you what, babies, kind of sum it up. Sum it up in less than a minute. Peace. What it looked like. How to pursue it. How to keep it. And how it starts. Got to be with you before you can go with anybody right. else and go with that. Right. Peace first starts. Peace first starts within you. Mm -hmm. that, that, that peace then is extended out to the other the people that's close to you. Mm -hmm. After that peace is extended out to the ones that's close to you, then you have got to go outside the home. Mm -hmm. And going outside the home, you're going to the marketplace. The marketplace is the schools, the the, 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 the bank, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the post office. You know. So how do you keep that peace when somebody may ugly to you and you ain't been nothing but kind to them? You still be nice to them. Mm -hmm. If you can't be nice to them, keep your mouth. But I'm angry. I'm upset. It's fine. I still keep my mind. But I want to verbalize it. Um, and then, you know what? If I do begin to verbalize it, I, be, I begin to verbalize it in a way that, guess what? It won't tie me up. I let people off the hook. And I'm just being honest with you. And I'll say this quickly. Wow, they having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Man, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, hey so I, I'm, I'm not the problem. Right? Hey, I'm not the uh -huh. problem. Because the re one reason I know I'm not the problem, I pray to God that, hey, I, I'm the solution to someone's problem and not the problem. I, I can take people off the hook when they're having a bad time or, or whatever. Because then the other thing I always say, I don't know what these people are going through. And so basically, really what you have to do is not take it personal. Not take it personal. Not take it personal. Talk to yourself. Trust God. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have to get in the car. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite thought? What's your favorite scripture? What's your favorite book? Whatever you have mm -hmm. to do to think on those things, to bring you peace, yes. to think on good things, yes. to talk good things, even when you don't want to, you sing a good song, you know, music have always been a thing for me. Sing a song. Listen to a song. Dance, rock, pop, jump, whatever you have to do, and you'll find out that that can change your mood. If you change your thought, it'll change your attitude, it'll change your mood, and it'll change your day. And one thing I I, I, be, I, I try to be consistent on, especially when I'm with by myself and I'm not around my wife and stuff, and sometimes she's not able to correct me. Like, Jim, don't say that, no. Is I be, I pray for those, those people. I pray for them. I don't say stuff I used to say. Especially towards a color. Father God, you know exactly what the problem is, God. And I just dispatched the angels to do spiritual warfare on the behalf. And I just speak life into them. I said that, that, that they shall live and not die and declare the good works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Just something real simple and small. And so, mm -hmm. those are some key elements we just wanted to share during this time. You know, it's Christmas time. People feel sad about different things. They, you know, don't want to feel like that. They want to break that mold. So we just want to pop on real quickly. We in a different set, and I know y'all know, and I think this is going to be us for, it's it for us, because I like that they can sit at the table and drink my coffee, and just so have my cup said, peace, coffee. Coffee. And so hey. with that being said, guys, we love you guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button. We are going to be more uh, visible. Yes. As one of our goal sets in 2021 is to be more visible with more topics and share more of our life, not only our life lesson, but our life with you guys. And we want you to know that we love you and we want you to know as a married couple, mm -hmm. you work this thing out in God and you will watch God. Watch God. He says, stand still and see my salvation. How both of you, even though you're individuals, mm -hmm. but you're connected as one. As one. Love you guys. Bye.